Hi, I'm Daphne Richards and this is Augie. Our question this week comes from viewer Jason Wisser, who'd like to know, what are these crazy looking insects on my crepe myrtle trees? An exciting question. I'll fully admit that insect identification is not my strongest suit, made even worse by the fact that I have the amazing Wizzy Brown, extension entomologist extraordinaire, as an encyclopedic resource right down the hallway. But in this instance, these little critters are actually in my very own database, hence my excitement. These are ladybug pupa. These are ladybug pupa, the fact of which is also exciting since they're beneficial garden visitors. Being carnivores, they feed on aphids and other insects that damage our precious plants. They'll eventually turn into the adult ladybug, ladybug that you'll easily recognize, and their presence indicates a healthy ecosystem. We should encourage more beneficial insects in the garden, and the best way to do that is to not use any broad spectrum pesticides. Broad spectrum means that a product targets many different types of insects, including not only the dead, the bad bugs, but also the good ones. This doesn't just apply to chemical products. It also includes organic ones, such as neem oil, which kills a wide variety of insects, mites, and even fungi. Cultural controls, such as pruning, or even just letting nature take its course, are often viable options and help maintain a balance in the garden. Our plant this week is crinum lily, or I should say, lilies, since there are a plethora of wonderful cultivars to choose from. Crinum lilies, with their fragrant, gorgeous summer flowers, have been the obsession of many a botanist throughout history. As with many other plants, such as roses and tulips, this obsession led to much human manipulation of the flower color and other attributes through hybridization. Crinum lilies are perennial, dying back to the ground each winter. They're perfectly comfortable in the hot summers of the southern U.S., but need a little extra irrigation in periods without rainfall in order to thrive. Crinum lilies may be planted in partial shade or full sun and benefit from the addition of two to three inches of organic mulch, which releases moisture into the air as it dries. Like many bulbs, crinum lilies create offshoots that are easily dug and separated, making them great pass-along plants. The foliage can get a bit droopy and unkempt, and if it does, simply snip off the damaged leaves if you find them too unsightly. Most cultivars are three to four feet tall and almost as wide at maturity, so give them plenty of space. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit us to send us your great shots, videos, and questions at krlu.org ctg.